Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Christian Glombeck. I'm one of the co-chairs uh, for the OKD Working Group. And yeah, we'll be presenting on the state of OKD4 today. So welcome, everybody. Uh, let's have a look at the agenda first. So we'll go through what is OKD4, then what is Fedora Core OS. We'll have a OKD4 beta demo. Then we'll have a quick look at the road ahead, then an introduction to the OKD working group, and then just a call to try the OKD4 beta. Let's get started. What is OKD4? OKD4 is the origin community distribution of Kubernetes. It is the OpenShift code base uh, that is also used for the OpenShift compute platform, our product at Red Hat. Um, also called OCP, uh, plus Fedora Core OS. Uh, you can find all the info on OKD.io. So OKD for a community distribution of Kubernetes plus plus, uh, it's automated installation, patching, and updates from the OS up. Um, what does that mean? So we, we actually have bundled the operating system with the cluster and it's all packaged together. So from the lowest level to the application level, it's all automated operations. Um, we have uh, the Linux host with Fedora Core OS, uh, platform and cluster management, which is the OpenShift Kubernetes distribution. And then on top of that, we have operators that uh, run the applications in an automated manner. So let's see what platforms we support. Uh, we run on bare metal VMs, OpenStack, AWS, Microsoft Azure, and Google Cloud, Cla Google Cloud platforms. Uh, Google Cloud platform. Sorry. Uh, for for some of that, those platforms, you may need to upload the images manually before you can start the installation process, which requires a little bit of manual work. But most of it is really driven by the installer and fully automated on most platforms as well. OK, going to the next section, what is Fedora Core OS? Fedora Core OS is an automatically updating Linux OS. It's aimed at containerized workloads. It's based on RPM OS tree and ignition. And it's built with CoreOS assembler and composed of Fedora RPM packages. So let's pause here a little bit. That's a lot of information on one slide. We have uh, sort of taken the best uh, learnings from the Atomic Host uh, OS and from CoreOS. Uh, which is the technologies RPM OS tree and Ignition, and put them together in Fedora Core OS and also in Red Hat Core OS, which, repla which uh, replaces Fedora Core OS in OCP. In OCP, we, we have our Red Hat Core OS or Red Hat Enterprise Linux Core OS uh, instead of Fedora Core OS, which is the main difference between OKD and OCP. Um, they're built with a tool called CoreOS Assembler. You can actually uh, build your own operating system out of RPMs with that. And Ignition is used to do the first boot configuration here. So it's a, I really like the concept. It's uh, super easy to provide the configuration up front, and then Ignition takes care of configuring everything um, on first boot. And RPM OS tree is our immutable host OS, or, or the system that builds immutable host images. Uh, so it's an image-based operating system. All right. Um, I'll hand this off to, to Vadim now for the OKD4 beta demo. So Vadim, take it away. Hello, my name is Vadim Volkovsky, and I will demo OKD4 today. 
So if you're familiar with OpenShift Container Platform a web console, you will notice that OKD4 landing page, overview page, is very similar to um, OCP, except we use different branding. It will cut that down. We use different branding for OKD, and other than that, um, we support all the features which OKD has, uh, meaning monitoring, inventory, cluster inventory, and details pages, and also, and all like that. The most major difference is that we use Fedora Core S as a basis for all our nodes. Thus, we use a newer kernel version and the newer packages, including uh, Cryer on time and so on. In OKD4, we also support uh, community operators using Operator Hub. So um, users won't have to require, don't require a subscription from Red Hat to install operators. In fact, in order to install OKD4, they don't require any full secret at all. And uh, OKD4 also has a developer view, same as OCP, where developers um, they get away from complexity of pods, deployments, and so on, and work with a simplified version and better focus on deploying the code instead of um, working with Kubernetes primitives. Um, we also talked a lot about operators. So uh, OKD4 contains of approximately 30 operators right now, which make it run. And in order to demonstrate their value, we have created a small game. Which is similar to standard duck hunt, but every time I shoot a duck, we're killing a pod or removing a deployment. Or yeah, that's enough. And we can see that those pods are in fact killed, but our cluster doesn't go down because the operators are ensuring that all the necessary pods. Um, are being restarted and recreated from scratch if necessary. So uh, the game shows the value of the operators. And that's pretty much all I've got. Uh, all right, thank you very much, Vadim. Let's uh, continue uh, with your road ahead. Uh, so uh, we have a roadmap uh, for OKD4, and with the beta release, we're really in f in the middle of phase one, uh, which is we have something that works, and we're still stabilizing it. And phase two would be reached when we when we uh, have a GA release ready, which is soon, hopefully. Um, and we'll be focusing on community collaboration and technology incubation in phase two and in the in the future. So what we really want to do is invite the community to uh, participate in in OpenShift development and have a yeah have a feedback to the circle that sort of uh, that we as Red Hat also get value from. In that we fix issues on the, the newer Fedora Core OS system, newer in, in and with the meaning of it has the newest kernel and things like uh, C groups v2 and everything that hasn't landed in Red Hat Core OS, Red Hat Enterprise Linux Core OS yet. So we really want to use OKD as a as a vehicle to to stabilize things before they land in our product, and also give the community the opportunity to to use these things early on. So technology incubation is a huge part in collaboration with the community. There's also great projects like the ACME 
uh, OpenShift Acme uh, controller that uh, can be used to provision uh, certificates for services and routes that run in OpenShift. And we want to put these kinds of things in OKD or make them optionally installable in OKD so the community really gets gets value out of this. Uh, so yeah, this is the road ahead. Let's go to the OKD working group. The OKD working group is the place where we meet and discuss openly uh, the development and future plans for OKD. We have a Slack channel, OpenShift dev on the kubernetes.slack.com. Uh, we also have an OpenShift Commons Slack where you can find us in the general channel and also in the OKD4 channel. We have a Google group, which you can find under that link. Um, that's also used as our mailing list. So you can subscribe to that group and you'll get invitations to the bi-weekly video conference meetings, for example, uh, which you can also, which we hold. And you can find a calendar where those are marked um, on, on the Fedora FedoCal under the link below. We also have two repositories. Uh, one is the github.com openshift slash community repository, which we use to track things we, we want to discuss in, in the meetings. And we have the openshift slash OKD repository, which is our tracker for our bug tracker, essentially. So with that, I would like to call on everybody to try the OKD4 beta. Um, you can find it on okd.io slash download.html. And there's a few more resources linked here. The docs.okd.io. Then we have our release viewer um, where you can see all the, the builds from our CI system and even try out newer unreleased versions. Um, and again, those two repositories. So with that, I would like to say thank you for listening in. And I hope you're enjoying working with OKD.